Okay, so this is the last video for tutorial number three. Lots of stuff going on in, with recoding. Uh, and I fear I've saved the most complicated one for the last. So you'll see in the lesson plan, it's um, income. And uh, here you can see uh, the very first instruction is to watch the video. <laughs> because I really do need to walk you through this one just so that you understand the logic of uh, everything that's happening. So again, I'm going to go back into Stata and I am going to open up my do file, which is the same one that I used before. So this is tutorial three, video two, interest in ideology. I am going to save this as um, video three. If I could spell, that would be great. income. Okay. All right. So if I were a student, I would be starting by starting my log file. Three and save. There we go. All right. So this do file should start to be looking pretty familiar to you now, right? Oop, I will change this so that it's video three income. Okay. So you can see I've got my Canadian election study. I'm just gonna do my little keyboard shortcut to make that run. I've got my data set loaded now. Uh, if I wanted to run all of these, I would just, honestly, what I always do is I have set more off. I select the whole thing, make it run, and poof, there's all of that stuff that I had done over the last two tutorial videos. And if you look, any new variable that you create comes in at the bottom. So I've got my education, my interest, and my ideology variable all here. Uh, see how quick that was, though? Like, you spend the time setting up your do file. And then once your do file is set up, um, that means that you can always come back and just, like, replicate your work basically in however long it takes the computer to do it. So this is, I think, one of the <coughs> most useful things about Stata is that this little do file... Um, is one that you can, uh, like, yeah, like you can set it up and run it and it's all, the, it's all great. Now, I also want to show you text edit. One of these like generic text programs also opens it up. You can see this is, this is some of the stuff that I'm going to be showing you for income here. So if you ever wanted to take this and say, work on it outside of the lab with your do file, you just know you need this like text editor kind of thing. And uh, it can open up any do file that you have in this and then you can work in it and presumably you should be able to open it back up again or you should be able to copy and paste from your text editing like basic text file into your do file as well. So just good little tricks to know. All right. So the last recode that we need to do is about income. And you've already seen both income variables in tutorial two because they've got different levels of measurement. I'm just going to do look for income to see where they are. And here I've got the total household income before taxes with the gobbledygook again. And then this, we don't need to know the exact amount. Uh, and then I've got like a couple of other things about in income inequality, right? So I'm just going to look income here. And I know I need CPS 19 income number and CPS 19 income cat. Okay. So these are the two that I want. I'm going to do tab one, both of them, because I just want to run frequencies of both. Whoopsies. And there I did a goof with my keyboard shortcut, but I've got that correct. Okay. So here we're looking at the beginning of CPS 19 income number. What was your total household income before taxes for 2018? And it's like, be sure to include income from all sources. And I got to say, I don't know about anybody else, but I would really struggle. I do not know this um, off the top of my head. Like I have a really good handle on my budget, like my disposable income um, per month or even per pay period. Uh, but I don't know what that is for like the, over, like I would have to do some calculations to get that for the whole year. Uh, and I would certainly n not need to do some calculations to even estimate that based on like what it is before taxes. And this doesn't even include me trying to figure out like I'm not the only inner earner in my household either, right? So you can ask people this, like, what was your total household income before taxes last year? And a lot of people are going to, they'll give you a number. Uh, but a lot of other folks are going to be like, I have no idea. Like, and like genuinely, I don't know. So this is one of these ones where it's so long, this one. 
I'm going to break that and I'm going to run this again. Set more off and yeah, poof. So there they all come. So I can scroll all the way up to see. Uh, here we are. Um, nope. And then there's the one I broke off, I think. Oh, this thing is such a monster. Yeah. Here's the real one. So we go from zero. So people who say they earned nothing last year uh, or in 2018, because this was asked in 2019 of the year before. And then we have all of this, all of this. It's so long. It's so unwieldy. Uh, and then I think we have lying liars who just like gave such an exorbitant amount that I don't think any of these people actually earned this, but this is what they told us that they earned. This is clearly um, like unwieldy and very difficult to use. So we're going to have to do something with this to put it into a format that's actually useful for us. But note, I want you to pay attention to this. Like in usually we kind of like we've run a number of variables already with the campaign period survey. So we know that the number of people in the survey is like 35,000 or like a bit more, right? So we're missing a whole bunch of folks. So many people gave us an answer to this question, but a lot of people, you can just tell from this question wording, people are like, we don't actually need to know the exact amount. Just put yourself into one of these categories. So the reason why this gets asked is for two reasons. One is the one I already alluded to, like folk don't know. So they'll honestly say, I have no idea. I legit don't know. And this is when they're like, well, we don't need to know the exact amount. Just like put yourself in a category. The other reason is that sometimes people get a little bit weird talking about money and they don't want to disclose to a stranger or to somebody that they don't know, or like in general, how much money they make or how many, like how much money they've got. And so either people don't know the exact amount or they, they're like, I'm not telling you that. Like, I don't want to give you that information. And so uh, this is also where this often will come in as a way to like ease people in to say like, listen, I, I know like you might not want to talk about this, but um, like I don't need to know the exact amount. I just need to know like this ballpark category. And this is where we've got something that like looks a lot nicer <laughs> to deal with, to be completely frank. We still have a bunch of missing data on this one. What's interesting about the income number is that we just have numbers, right? So this is another one of these instances where I know there's missing data for this income number variable um, because people who answered income number didn't get income cat. And people who got income cat, they only got income cat because they're missing on income number. So this is one of these things where we need to do something useful with the missing data first in order for us to build the complete variable. Cause this is the problem. Like we can, we can't just work with the people who gave us an answer on the first question and drop the people who gave us an answer in the second question and vice versa, right? Like we can't just take these 12,000 people and like ignore these 25,000. We've got to figure out how to get these two together so that we can use them all together. This is where we need to do several steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is work with income number. So I'm going to gen generate a new variable. I'm going to call it income one equals CPS income number. Now what I need to do is to recode income number into income cats categories. I cannot spell today. There we go. Categories. So what I need to do is basically take this big old thing and collapse it down into this. Now, in order for me to be able to do this, what I need to do is to know the numerals behind each one of those categories. So I've got tab, that one, no label. So I want to know the categories, no label. And what's really interesting is that no income is one. Yeah which would be the equivalent of my zero for this giant one up here. Oh, what a mess. Yeah. So here, these zero, I've got 72 people who say that they earned literally zero dollars in income number. Uh, but if I look at income categories, the people who said no income out of this one are 213. So uh, I know that my but it corresponds to the numeral one, not zero. So the very first thing I need to do is to recode income one, zero equals one. Now two 
is my one to 30,000. So one, and that forward slash is through 30, one, two, three, equals two. That's my first category. Then it's 30,001 dollar through to 60, one, two, three, equals my three. Uh, 60,001 through 90,000 equals four. Uh, then I've got 90,001 through to 110,000 equals five. Now, if you remember from tutorial two, uh, one of the things I asked about was the level of measurement of income category. So income cat here. And this is why it's ordinal. So like zero means zero, but the intervals between the categories, they're not even. And so even if it was like the no income, like even if that wasn't doing it, it's this like these are 30,000 buckets until you get to this one where it's 20,000. And this is a $40,000 bucket. And then it's a $50,000 bucket. And then it's this like, like this big old catch-all one at the end. I'm not so fussed about that one, but it's this like oscillation between 30 and 20 to 40 to 50. That's what makes this ordinal for sure. Anyway, so I've got my 110, my category six. And here, like if I wanted to check to make sure I was getting this right, um, Oh no, this doesn't tell me anything, but it's, it's like, I want to make sure that I have all these categories matched, right? So I've got, um, so I know I can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus my nine is my don't knows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So anyway, here's my five. My five is, um, the 90 to 110, and so I'm doing to 110, one, 110, one, two, one, divided by, Oh, all the way through, rather, through to 150, 150, 1, 2, 3. That is my sixth category. Then I do $150,001 through to 200,000, 1, 2, 3, equals my seventh. And then I've got this 200,000 through to max. Because to be honest, I am not going to deal with that, all of them. I'm just going to be like to the maximum value, off we go. I don't believe that person is telling me the truth about their income, but whatever. Okay, max equals eight. And then I also have to do something with the missing data because I know that there's anybody who answered the categories didn't answer the number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say make the missing data equal zero. And I'll show you the reason why for it in a minute, but I need you to make the missing data zero. This is gonna be the key part to this one. So I'm just collapsing the big thing into these categories for income cat. And then I, cause I know no income there is one, right? So zero isn't doing anything in the, in, for the numerals for this one yet. Um, even though like there's legit income. Anyway, I need to make the missing zero, that is key make the missing values in CPS equal zero. Okay, so I'm just gonna recode and then I'm gonna tab income one. So, oop, there we go. So, and look at this, I've got 12,000 people in my, in, there is missing data. And if I tab, like if I do the table of my income categories, like. 12,263, and I've got like very close to that. So this is why you need to, basically I need to take all the people who didn't answer the income number question and make them a zero for income categories. Now, what do I do with income categories? I need to make another variable. So income two is going to be uh, CPS 19 income cat. Uh, but I don't need to do such a big recoding exercise, right? I really just need to deal with my missing data. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to recode income to nine equals missing, because those are people who legitimately are like not even answering that question. And then I'm also going to say the existing missing equals zero two. Then I'm going to tab income two. Okay. So when I do it that way, you'll note that well, and I'll even do, do tab one, income one, income two. So here I've got these two together. You'll note now they're on the same scale. So I've got, and they all have the same total number of cases. And you can see the big variation is on people who say that they 
uh, there is like the zeros are missing at this point. So anybody who's telling me zero, these are somebody who answered one question, but not the other, or they actually refuse to answer both questions. But now I know that my one is my no income. My two is that one dollar to thirty thousand. Three is thirty thousand and one to sixty. Four is sixty thousand and one to ninety. So on and so forth, right? And eight is my max category for both of them. So now, in order for me to put these together, I literally do gen, make a new variable again, income. And here I'm just going to do income one plus income two. Here's the thing. If somebody answered one variable, but not the other, there is zero on one and there are substantive value on the other. And so this means that I'm basically subbing them into the zero spot for each other so that when I tab, so when I put them together, anybody who stays a zero is legitimately missing. So here, look, I've got 2000 people who like, I have zero information on income from like both of them from both variables. So these are like my legit missing folks. Here's my no income people. And then I just to up to my maximum. So I know that one through eight tells me something important about their income. I know what one through eight mean. Um, one is no income. Two is up to 30,000. Three is 30,000 and one to 60,000, so on and so forth. Right? So I have notes here that tell me what each one of those categories is, but zero is just genuinely missing. So now I'm going to recode income. So the first thing I have to do is zero equals missing. That's the very first thing I do. Uh, and that means that those people are genuinely missing. And so then I'm just going to like run that frequency again. And I've got this distribution here. Now I've got a couple of options that I could use to try to figure out like what I'm going to do with this because like, uh, again, one through eight, not super useful. I could put the value labels back on them, but eight categories like this is still quite a lot. Like it's, it's, I, I usually just want no more than three for this, the work that you folks are going to do. And so for income here, I'm going to approach it the same way that I approached political interest. I'm going to want to try to divide everybody into even thirds. So I'm going to do my best to try to find out where my, like that 33 point, mark and my 66 point marker also like 33 to 67 things along those lines and again you can see that um there are very few people at the very bottom and there's very few people at the very top there's more of them at the top than at the bottom but like i get this kind of clustering across categories two through four especially in three and four so i know my big clustering is in this middle bit between thirty thousand and ninety thousand i'm not surprised by this like stats can will indicate that this is the median income uh like i think the median income for anywhere in canada lands somewhere between these two categories so i'm not surprised that this is where things are bunching so the question i have to decide is where am i going to make my cut points between like my low and my middle category and then my middle and my high category now, conveniently, I've got 67 right there. So I know that my cutoff between my high category, my middle and my high category is going to be four. So five through eight is going to be my top category. The question is, what do I want to do? Do I want to make three and four together and have a monster middle category? Or do I want to have a bigger bottom category there? For me, I would actually rather have, if I'm looking at this, four standing on its own is at 23. So I'm almost at a quarter of the cases in this category alone. And so I'm okay with that being a standalone as the middle. Um, if this was a little bit less bunched, I can see like making a different choice on those cut points, but that's the choice I'm going to make here. So I'm going to recode. I've already done the recode income there. So I'll just do another line, recode income. I'm going to do one through three equals my low, four equals my middle, and then five through eight equals my three. Then label values. Now income, this is where I'm going to do one equals lower income, two is moderate income, three is higher income. Label values, income, income, tab, income. 
Okay, so I know I've done this particular recode, so I'm just going to grab these lines here. Oop. Why didn't that work? Huh, that's weird. May build values and come. Oh, label define. Sorry, I uh, wrong command there. Label define. Boop. There we are. It's common to make tons of mistakes every time. Okay, so here we are. So now I've got this um, total of like thirty, almost thirty-five thousand people, which compared to like the twenty-five from income number and the twelve from income cats, this means I'm actually getting everybody together. And so I've got lower income, moderate income, higher income. Uh, and here you can see that particular distribution. Now, like, I'm just going to foreshadow something new that you'll do later. But if I wanted to, like, you'll notice I've been doing a lot of tab one. If I want to run um, two variables, like, simultaneously here, um, if I take the one off, oopsies, uh, it makes a table. So I'll show you, I'll walk you all the way through like what you're going to be doing with this particular table here, but like later, because this is the kind of thing that you're going to be running for your research reports. But what this is just showing is like, as income increases, what happens to education? And look at this for people like you see this like steady drop for the proportion of people who have high school education or less across like higher income categories. So like for lower income, that like a third of the people who are in the lower income bracket here um, have a high school or uh, high school education or diploma or lower compared to 10% in the higher income category, right? So you see that there's clearly a relationship going on there. For reasons we ignore the middle and I'll explain why once we get to that particular unit. And here we've got university degree or higher and look at what happens with income. This nice like half the sample for the higher income bunch has a university degree, right? Uh, so this shows that there's this connection between income and education. Now, I raise this because in the lecture for this week, we've been talking about causality and things that you have to worry about in terms of figuring out time order and things along those lines. And education and income is one of these ones where like you can make an argument in both directions. And so the, again, the choices that we make, um, as a researcher, like here's how we flip it the other way, right? So again, people with like, if you're looking at levels of education, like the proportion of people with university degrees in the lower income category is like way lower than with high school. And we can see a similar kind of relationship where if you've got university, you earn more, things along those lines. Figuring out time order across education and income is a challenge, right? Because it's hard to figure out what comes first. And for different people, it's going to be a different thing, right? So, yeah, anybody who's spending an awful lot of time on student loans is, like, that's what I did, to be frank, uh, as an undergraduate student um, and a grad student. I spend a lot of time in student loans. Like, this is kind of the hope, right? That, like, the more education you manage to get yourself, it'll actually pay off with higher income in the end. I've had conversations with previous governments as well, back when I was a student and an activist, in part because I felt like I was getting screwed over <laughs> with the student loans and I wasn't wrong about that because there are policy choices and at the time the policy choice from the government was very much uh, this idea of there's no social good um, to higher levels of education they said I did not think they were correct but this is what they said they basically said education is this individual benefit and it's because look at what happens with higher levels of education like your probability of getting higher income pays off but I mean if you're looking at this, like it also shows that university is like much more accessible for people. Like the other argument you can make is that higher edu levels of education are way more accessible for people who already have access to greater financial resources, right? Like part of this is going to be like you can't, don't have the income to get into post-secondary, which is why you see this clustering here, right? So this speaks to like structural inequality, um, Whereas this argument is very much putting, like, look at what's happening to individual attainment in terms of education and income. So 
like as researchers, particularly on this one, between the relationship between income and education, we would have to make a choice about like what we thought came first in terms of time order. And to be honest, with education and income, um, the time order is not clear. So that means that our internal validity is low. Our ability to make a causal argument here is actually real bad, real bad. Uh, I mean, this looks pretty generalizable to like people's experience though. So like our external validity is doing all right. Um, but our ability to make a causal claim, yeah, we can't make a causal claim here very clearly at all. I can't really go into that in the lecture video, but like this is one of the key examples of like, if you're going to want to say that like income comes before education or education comes before income, the strength of your claim will rest exclusively on your argument um, about time order. Anyway, that's my detour on this one to talk about education and its relationship with income and to highlight a little bit about how you might actually go about like making tables like this. The key point is like the two income variables, you've got to jam them together uh, to actually get a good indicator, a complete indicator for income. And this is how you do it. You take that first big old gnarly one, recode it into the categories from the other one and then make sure that the missings are zero then you take the category one, assign all the missing values as zero, add them together, and then like code them into something that you can actually use that tells you something about, yeah, income in Canada in the 2019 Canadian election study. Okay, so again, just to finish this off, I'm going to save my do file. I'm going to actually end my log this time. So I close the log. I have already saved it to a spot, so I just closed it, that's fine. And then I'm going to quit data. I'm not going to save it. And of course, I will then go to, if I was a student, I'd go into D2L uh, and upload all of that stuff into the Dropbox just so that um, there was a record of my work. And I would also complete the quiz on D2L as well. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, that income index is, I think, one of the most difficult. But once you understand the logic of what you're asking the computer to do, it starts to open up a whole bunch of other possibilities for you as well.